Minecraft is an incredible game, and the community playing it is, well, for the most part, incredible as well. With such a community-driven game, what are some ways that even less experienced players can improve and impress their friends? That's what we're exploring today. Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. I'm Connor Monroe and this is the Top 10 Easy Tricks to Impress Your Friends in Minecraft. Let's jump in. And at 10 MLG Water Bucket. The term MLG water bucket, or as I like to call it, the splashy bucket, is a term used for the action of placing water right below you as you land on a block, thus preventing fall damage. This trick seems complicated, but is actually fairly easy to master after getting used to it, perhaps on a single player world, since there won't be anyone there to judge you. This trick is used by the pros like Dream to make a quick escape, and can really help you if you get knocked up into the air by something like the Ender Dragon, or if your elytra fails and you plummet to your death. This trick does get more difficult the higher you're falling from, but nonetheless it looks damn impressive, especially if none of your friends can do it too. I used this in Minecraft, but the Among Us imposter chases me in order to escape Bree when I was on a mountain. And if you pick the water up at the last second, it can also serve as a makeshift trap for anyone who is following you. And at 9 Speed Portal. The nether is essential to any survival world. The process typically involves getting diamonds, then making a diamond pickaxe so you can get the obsidian into place. However, this can be sped up by a factor of like 20, where all you really need is 3 iron to make a bucket. The speed portal was created by speedrunners in order to get to the nether the fastest way possible, preventing the need to find diamonds and just looking cool too. Using the mechanic of water, touching a lava source, turning it into obsidian, you can make a 4 tall tower of blocks, placing the water on the inside of that tower and then building up the portal with the lava instead of obsidian. The lava will instantly turn to obsidian and then you can light the portal once it's done. Here's a clip. And it ain't flying. Using an elytra is always fun. It helps you get around faster, you can fight things like the wither easier, and it just makes sense. This does require you to get to the end and find an end city with a boat, but once you do, you're golden. You can enchant it, get a creeper farm, and you can soar around the sky as much as you want. The real point of this number is to get good at flying, though. Elytras can be a powerful tool for you, and they become especially more powerful if you have the skills to fly around in places like the nether where it's difficult to rain, and your friends will all be impressed. This also goes for custom maps with elytra courses like Diversity, where you can really show off and make your friends jaws drop. Flying through small spaces will always be cool, even to the pros. And if you have a cape, your elytra will just look a lot cooler. And it's 7 enchantments. Enchantments are the core of pro Minecraft. Enchanting is certainly something that can be achieved fairly early on, requiring only 5 diamonds, 3 for the pickaxe, for the obsidian, and 2 for the table itself. But the real good enchantments come from villagers. Librarian villagers using the lectern are the holy grail of the pro's Minecraft arsenal. They can have enchantments like efficiency, fortune, silk touch, unbreaking, and even mending, which is a treasure enchantment, so you can't really get it anywhere else. All of which are essential when looking to make stonks so you can buy everything at the barge. Getting fortune 3 and a vein of diamond can easily triple your diamond intake. And mending is essential for all your tools, weapons, and other gear, especially with elytras. Those damn things will wear out so fast if you don't have unbreaking 3 and mending. Being able to put these custom enchantments on your gear to make god tier prop 4 armor is always going to make you look like a pro. Villagers are annoying to work with, but the time is 100% worth it in the end, especially after you end up dying and losing all your stuff, because it will happen. And at 6, Nether Hub. A Nether Hub is the easiest way to travel in the overworld. If you don't already know, one block in the Nether counts as 8 blocks in the overworld. So you can basically travel 8 times as fast around the overworld by spending a couple of seconds going through a portal. This can be done by just following a path to other Nether portals in the nether, or if you want to be a super pro, get on top of the nether roof by ender pearling through the blocks and then put your hub up there. No mobs spawn on bedrock and you have no terrain to manage, and finding your way back is as easy as walking in a straight line. These are simple ways of linking up important places in the world like the end portal or certain villages or ocean monument farms, or things like a desert for sand grinding or a mesa for all your terracotta needs. All you need to do to make sure that the portals are actually linked is to divide the overworld coordinate by 8 and then you have where you need to place the nether version of the portal to ensure consistent linkage. Halfway through at number 5, Villager Trading Hub. 
Villagers are a pain, but I've said this earlier. But most of the pain can be mitigated by trapping them all in a trading hall that harnesses the power of AI traps and workstations. Setting one of these up is kind of difficult. The villagers don't always do what you want them to do, and even if the slightest thing goes wrong, you're in for a wild ride. But as a way to get easy materials like bricks and clay, this will be well worth the pain, especially with enchantments that you will be using so frequently. Your friends will also be in awe of what you were able to create, not only because it's useful, but because it's took so damn long to do. And if they don't appreciate it, just tell them that they can do it themselves because they aren't allowed to use your villager hub, and then they'll be crying when they see how much work it really takes, especially to get the good stuff. And then take that one step further and turn all the villagers into zombies and then cure them for cheaper trades. And they'll be throwing their emeralds at you, asking them to get like 11 mending books at once in an attempt to get a monopoly on the mending books. But you, you're the one who does it, so <laughs> don't let them. And a fourth full netherite. Full netherite has become the standard after it replaced diamond as the highest tier item, providing good knockback resistance and the inability to be destroyed by lava. However, getting full netherite can take some time. Getting full netherite quickly will take some grinding, but with a decent supply of TNT or beds, you'll be getting the 8 or 9 netherite necessary for full tools and armor soon enough, depending on if you have two picks, one with silk touch and one with looting. But wait to make the hoe until there are others online, since you get the advancement serious dedication, and then you can brag to everyone about it. Plus, enchanted netherite just looks incredibly sexy, and I want to bite me off a piece of that netherite fudge. And at three, knowing on mechanics. There are some lesser known mechanics that can serve you some good in game, at least if your goal is to impress your friends. Knowing smaller things like how you take less fall damage on hay bales, or that you can use chorus fruits to save you from falling, little known mechanics like that make Minecraft a little more interesting and is definitely going to amaze your friends. The hay bale trick is a fun one and so is pulling with like fishing rods, but mostly everyone knows that one. There are plenty of other things you can find like how you can put a boat in a minecart and use that boat to power that minecart and things like that. There are plenty of other videos is going over those details, but if you'd like us to make a one about the best, be sure you let us know below. And it's you using an axe. Ever since the 1.9 combat update, the PvP mechanics have been changed to consider skill more than anything else. Good timing is really key here, and so is picking the right weapon. With a shield, your best move is to use an axe. It takes longer to recharge, yes, but if you're on the move, then this is negated since you do need to catch up to your prey anyway. The big deal here is that the stone axe does the same amount of damage as a diamond sword. So in the beginnings of something like a survival games or even a manhunt, an axe will do you wonders, especially if you can get a netherite axe, but definitely not at the beginning. An axe can also be enchanted with a sharpness enchantment that can add up to five more damage damage, or two and a half parts at max level, which may not seem like much, but considering how a netherite axe already does 10 damage and only has a one second cooldown, which is only matched by a diamond axe, that's pretty good. Stone, iron, and diamond axes do the same damage, but the only difference is their recovery time. Axes also have the potential to disrupt blocking with a shield, and prevent the blocker from blocking for the next 5 seconds. The base chance is 25%, but 5% gets added for each level of efficiency on the axe, plus another 75% if you attack while sprinting. And mobs with axes will always disable a player's shield, so keep that in mind. The only downside is that axes use 2 durability when used as a weapon because technically it's not what they were meant for, but trust me, you get a critical stone axe hit on a friend and you'll watch them run for their lives. Finally, in a number 1, simple redstone. Redstone is complicated, don't worry, you're not the only one who thinks so. In fact, most of the Minecraft community doesn't use it, and even some of the pros stay well away from it as well. But some simple redstone like piston doors and block swappers can be extremely useful when trying to impress friends. The key, however, is truly simple things. And with additions like the Skulk sensor coming to the next update, these things will be even more impressive. For example, overhead lighting with block swappers looks incredible. Check out this design by El Mango. Lighting, for example, to the floor or the ceiling. So there's just a lot of use cases for block swappers. These can be used for anything, not even just lighting. We have a video coming out later this week that demonstrates this use in 1.17 in an even cooler way. So if you haven't, be sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out. There are plenty of online tutorials that demonstrate simple redstone, and since the addition of observers, things have only gotten easier. So study up if you want to impress your friends. There we have it, friends, the top 10 easy tricks to impress your friends in Minecraft. How long have you been playing Minecraft, and what version, Java or Bedrock? Be sure you let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been in Shower Main Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. Hermit Challenges! <laughs> what in the world just happened? <laughs> what if... <laughs> what if... <laughs> oh my goodness, that scared the life out of me! What in... Bamboo... Oh, for goodness sake! <laughs>